Welcome back. A few weeks ago, I took a look at the Aviate Lafayette Chronograph, and the main reason I decided to do that review was that it had been quite a while since I took a look at a chronograph, let alone a Mecha Quartz Chrono. Yet the other big reason was that it had also been quite some time since I heard from either Aviate or Spinnaker, and I was just curious about what they were up to. Yet about a week before AB8 even contacted me about the Lafayette, Spinnaker reached out and wanted to know if they could give me this watch to do a review on. And while that AB8 arrived in less than two weeks, it would be another month before the Spinnaker showed up. So this is just another example of how wacky and unpredictable international shipping is right now, as it kind of got to the point where I started seeing reviews for this that I started thinking Spinnaker just forgot to send it so it was a pleasant surprise when it showed up. Now, the Fluce line from Spinnaker is basically a 55 Fathoms homage, and the Chrono version is just that, using a Seiko VK73 Mecha Quartz movement. And unfortunately, just like the regular Fluce, this one is a bit on the large side, as we're looking at 43mm wide without, and almost 47 with the crown. You're also looking at a lug-to-lug -lug of 51mm, now, all in all, this is very manageable, but I think it is a little longer than I'd prefer. However, thickness isn't too bad sitting just under 13 millimeters, but it is a bit on the heavy side at around 175 grams, although a good chunk of that has to be within this bracelet. Once again, this is all very manageable, and it does feel pretty good on the wrist. Yet it's nowhere near as comfortable as, say, the Traska Summiter, which is the last watch I reviewed, or even Aviate's Lafayette Chronograph from last month. Now, as for the price, it's listed at $315, and that's with the bracelet. It's a little less without that. And do remember that with Aviate and Spinnaker, there are always discount codes floating around, including 15% off, which is the one I have for my channel. And that just brings it closer to $267 which is right in line with a lot of other micro-brand chronos, and especially if you're comparing just say spec to spec. Although, I think it is a bit ironic that you can get an actual Seiko Mecha Quartz these days for about half that. Anyways, let's take a closer look at the case. And the case is stainless, and the overall finishing is good. Both the top and the sides have a linear brushing that runs from lug to lug as well as a polished chamfered edge that acts as a border between those two sections. It's a pretty good look, but to be honest, it's one that a lot of other divers share. Now, the bottom edge does feel a bit sharp for my taste, especially once you get the bracelet off and you can feel in between the lugs. But for this price, that's not really uncommon. The lug to lug is a tad long, as when I'm wearing it, it does start to overhang my wrist by just a bit. Although, thanks to a slight curvature of those lugs, it's pretty comfortable to wear. At times, it can feel a bit wide, as well as a bit heavy, but it never felt too long. Now, moving to the back, you have Spinnaker's standard screw-down case back, and on the side, you have both the crown, as well as the chronograph pushers. And as a bonus, all three are screwed down, just for those watery activities which I think makes this the first diving chronograph I've run across. It's kind of an odd combination, as usually it's one or the other, but if you think about it, most digital watches have both a stopwatch and a timer, so why can't an analog? Although I wouldn't really say this is a full diver, as you are limited to 150 meters with the water resistance. Now the crown is a decent size, and it's always easy to utilize, and since this is a Mecha Quartz movement, those pushers always have a great feel to it. Although, no matter how good a case may or may not be, with a design like this, your eye is going to be more focused on the dial and this very colorful bezel. The bezel has a bit of a 50 fathoms design going on here, and it is 120 click, unidirectional, and has an acrylic crystal covering it, which may give it a great look, but not a whole lot of scratch protection. Although, no matter how good this thing looks, it is still a pain in the ass to use. It's not very tall, and it doesn't stick out very much. And with the bracelet and those chrono pushers, there's just not a lot of area where you can get a good grip on it. The action itself sounds pretty good, but unfortunately there is a ton of backplay with this one. So, just kind of disappointing here. 
Now the crystal that sits atop this dial is sapphire, and a lot of people would expect it at this price. But you'd be surprised at how many chronographs I've run across near this price that just has a sapphire coated mineral, including a lot of Dan Henry's and that Aviate Lafayette I last looked at. So just nice to see a true sapphire here. Which then all leads us to the dial underneath that crystal. So first off, let's talk about this green textured dial, which is then combined with raised yellow indices and a chapter ring. My first impressions of it was that it was rather bold and rather cool to look at. But after spending some time with it, my opinion is kind of softened on that. I still think this green color and texture can be cool, but it needs to be done in small doses. And this is a rather wide and rather expansive dial. So just kind of overkill for my taste. Although I do really like the touch of orange on the chapter ring and how that looks with a green dial. Now, as this is a chronograph, you have your standard chronograph subdials. With a 24 hour subdial at the three, running seconds at the six, and a minute elapsed at the nine. The hands in the design look great on all three of those, but the backdrop to them is a little odd, at least compared to the rest of the dial. The entire dial has a lot of texture to it, from the grainy look of the main area to the raised sharp edges of those indices. Yet the subdials have this really smooth dark amber look to them. It's just a really odd combination to me when it meets the textured dial. Although maybe not as odd as the double date window at the 12. Now I know it's standard with the movement so they're just utilizing it, but I never really found myself warming up to it. It kind of felt more like a distraction than anything else, and I think a lot of that has to do with the framing that surrounds it, as that polished framing is really the only thing reflective on the whole dial. Even the hands have a rougher brush texture to them. Now overall, I think the hands do look good against the textured backdrop, and I like that they're filled with yellow loom to match the indices. Not to mention the orange color of that chronograph second hand really pops against the green. All in all, it just gives it a lot of contrast and helps them stand out. Yet I think the hands as a whole are a bit short, or at least the minute and the second hand are. However, ironically, I think the hour hand might be the proper length, even though it is by far the shortest. However, my biggest complaint with the watch is with the orange second hand, and that's because the one I received isn't aligned properly. Now, generally these days, I don't make a big deal about misaligned quartz second hands. However, Mecha Quartz is the one exception to that. Now, on most quartz chronographs, you can adjust a second hand if it happens to lose at zero. But as far as I know, with Mecha Quartz, you can't, or at least you can't without opening it up. And worst yet, when the chronograph isn't running, well, that second hand just sits there at an off angle just taunting you with its imperfection. So for me, this is the one time you need to make sure it's done right, otherwise the entire watch looks off. Anyway, let's move on to the loom. And at first, the loom looks fantastic. Every aspect of that complicated dial just seems to come alive with a green glow. It's really cool looking, but it is woefully inadequate when it comes to staying power as I think it lasted maybe 45 minutes before my camera couldn't see it anymore. And meanwhile, the other four watches I had in this comparison just kept on going. Which overall is pretty surprising, just considering how great it looks at first, so I'm not really sure what kind of loom they're using here. Which then leads us to the bracelet. And this bracelet is hands down the best bracelet I've seen from Spinnaker. And hell, it's better than a lot of bracelets I've seen at almost double the price. It's a fully articulating H-Link bracelet, and it just looks great. Starts at 22, and then tapers down to 20. And I really appreciate the slight curvature of each link. And it is mostly brushed except for the beveled edge and the sides of the middle link itself. Just really great look. It's got a good solid feel to it, solid end links, and mostly a milled clasp. One of the odd things, and kind of a bonus, is that it does have a diver's extension, kind of in the same tradition as a Seiko turtle. And that particular section is pressed, not milled. 
So it's not a perfect bracelet, but overall it's a pretty good one. Overall, I think this is a watch that looks good at a distance, but once you start taking a closer look and a more analytical look at it, I think those flaws in the busy dial really start to make it lose its luster. Honestly, I've been a bit harsh on this one, maybe even more than I should have, but I do want to make it clear that I don't think the watch is a bad one at all, but I also wouldn't say it's a good one either. For me, it's just sort of middle of the road. I've seen better, but I've definitely seen far worse. The quality of the watch and its components are there, which I think easily justifies the asking price. Yet for me, it's just that the design really falls a bit short. Unlike the recent AV8, which had more of a clear vintage vibe to it, whereas this one just didn't feel like it had anything cohesive holding it together. But the tricky thing about design is that it's always very subjective to the individual user, and I'm sure there's some people out there who really love the way this one looks. So let me know down below what you think about this watch, or if you can think of another chronograph I should take a look at. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Till next time.